I have to say, I, I wasn't really a, a disco guy, and I don't know if it is, even if it was like a guilty pleasure of mine, but I had so much respect for uh, the guys who were making records there at Sigma back in the day. We were part of that family uh, over at Sigma, and so we rooted for, you know, for everybody who put a record out there, and that was one of the big ones, that's for sure. Actually, when disco happened, I remember thinking, oh God, what's that going to do to rock and rollers? And But a lot of great rock and rollers were playing on those records. I mean, T.J. Tyndall was the band leader on the Tramps version, their song, Disco Inferno. I think Disco Inferno, when, when you look back, it's kind of ironic, but I think Disco Inferno was probably the biggest record that ever came out of Philadelphia, much to, I'm sure, Gail would have this way. But, but Disco Inferno, without a doubt, and, and because of Saturday Night Fever, just surpassed everything else that ever came out of Philadelphia. So fortunately, I was lucky enough to be on it. And in fact, I was lucky enough to be leader of the session. So we were cutting a bunch of things that day for the Tramps, and this was just one of them. We got done, and, and as, as was the habit of the Philadelphia Rhythm Section, after we got done cutting the track, we would go into the control room and listen to the playback. And you could always tell which ones were going to be the hits. You, I mean, you could tell even without any vocals or anything, you could tell which ones were going to be the hits. TJ is such a, a great player, but to have the guy that was there when the, when the song was created, to have that essence of the real player there was just something that brought like a, like an authenticity and just a real soul. I mean, a real like, wow, yeah, this is this is the real deal to, to the track. When they asked me to do Disco Inferno, I I thought, well, that's different. That's different for me, certainly. Uh, <laughs> I sat with it for a while and I listened to it before I, before I said, sure, it's a pretty hip track, even today. If Sony put out a track like that today, it would probably still be a hit. The Graham is going to surprise us with this vocal today. He's been working on it. and. Um, it's gonna be. It's gonna definitely be his uh, spin on a, on a you know already popular, incredible song. So I'm looking forward to really the finished products. It's gonna be great. It's my son, so I mean you know it's, it's the happy dad syndrome here. And there. One of the cool parts is while we were recording, um, we were filming, and it, there were a couple of points when um, the uh, filmmakers wanted to get Graham just singing the song on the mic, you know, for cutaways or whatever. So we would just run the track down and he would just sing it again, just sing it for the camera. Well, while we were running it down, I recorded what he was singing because he wasn't thinking, he was just playing to the camera and it sounded great. So we actually used a lot of that vocal when the video was being shot and uh, it was interesting. You put a camera on somebody and they performed differently and he was, he was lights out. So This time uh, we're in Studio 4, in the pocket, Studio 4, which is awesome. Uh, we're working with Phil Niccolo, who uh, engineered and recorded so much of the early Hooters stuff. Uh, Amore we did completely in his studio, and then he worked on Nervous Night, One Way Home, Zigzag, all our albums really. Phil was just, like the Hooters, it was a Philly guy, and uh, with his brother Joe, the Butcher Brothers, they became really their own um, legendary production team. And uh, Phil's got great ears, and he just, he has that, the essence of a real rock and roller. He's just up, 
at the board rocking as much as the musicians do. So uh, it's, he's a wonderful friend as well as a collaborator. Sigma had their thing, but Studio 4 was developing their thing. So there was like, you know, some R&B stuff happening there, but mostly rock. And then Chris and Joe the Butcher, Joe Niccolo, uh, started doing Rough House. And, you know, they were cutting the school Lee and Chris Cross and a lot of that uh, hip hop stuff started happening there. It was like a whole new frontier, you know? It was like the Wild West, if you would, of music, you know? And now we're out in Conshohocken, and oddly enough, it's just right down the street from, you know, Rob's studio, and, you know, we have two of the greatest studios, I think, on the planet here in Conshohocken. The old Studio 4 in Philadelphia was one of the first rap groups to ever record a Studio 4. They never worked with anybody as black or as cool as me. Schooly D is a, a rapper that started in Philadelphia in the, in the 80s. I've known Schooly for a long time. His second record was recorded at our studio almost 30 years ago. If you ask Ice T or any of these old school guys, who did they listen to when they got started? They'll tell you Schooly D. Schooly D was the original gangsta rapper talking about street life. Schooly is legendary. Schooly um, is really, honestly, one of the originators of certainly of gangster and, and of hip hop on some level, doing it as far back as the early 80s. We were just tossed in, like in the 80s. This is early 80s. And of course, rap was just being born. Um, so it was real funny trying to navigate um, our different cultures and actually, um, having a new culture being born right in front of our eyes it's like, and having all of us be a part of it. Um, that, was, that was amazing. I thought, wow, how cool would it be to have, you know, Schooly come in and have him do his thing on this song? And, you know, the conversation was, what's my content? And I, I thought, well, why not have Schooly be Schooly? And he rhymes and it's rhythmic and what he does with his lyrics and the beat just blew me away, so I was really happy, and I thought it worked out great. It's great to be involved with a project with a, with a great cause, the Settlement Music School raising money. Um, so it, it, it's, just, it's just great to give back. It's great to work with great people who are all doing it, not for their own personal gain, but just to, to help people and to have fun and to make music. So that's, that's another great part of it, is that we all get to do it, and it, it's for a really, really good cause. Well, I went to Settlement Music School when I was 11. So I have a very personal relationship. I know that it's, that has been a, a great program for a lot of people coming up in the Philadelphia area. From what I know from the people who went to Settlement, they're very serious. Like if you want to be in a room with a really, a better musician than who you are, you know, some of these cats that come out of there are, are amazing. Thank you very much for supporting In The Pocket. This is song number six. We're having a blast doing it. We can't do it without you. Thank you very much.
can never be the same, yo. You know my name, they make it all steel up. It's the H double line, D D D, huh? Rhyme kicking, mic a ripping, a ripping. We always tripping. Understand that's how I'm living, how I'm living. I'm waiting, looking here. I got your brick and tea. No, no, it's our sister, please. <laughs>